They say that adding timing to a brushless motor makes more power. Is that correct? Let's find out. Even though sometimes the VESC is unstable, it does have some good features as far as data logging, particularly in real time, so we can see what's going on. I'm not sure this is gonna work or be that conclusive, but we're gonna give it a shot. So I've set up the VESC to work in block commutation, which is the sort of the normal way uh, that most ESCs work, because if you're running FOC or field-oriented control, which is what the VESC is really suited for, timing, I don't know if that really applies quite so much. Let's get into our first test. So the way that the timing is set up is a little bit weird in VESC tools. So basically zero degrees of timing is supposed to be equivalent to a phase advance of one. And 30 degrees of timing is equal to a phase advance of zero. I know it doesn't make sense. And by the way, the BR ERPM is above that point. The timing is effectively locked out as far as, you know, car guys would think of it anyway. Here's the weird thing, right? So if one is zero and zero is 30, well, besides not making sense and being confusing and all that, does it really work that way? So the default setting when you switch over to a block commutation is 0.8, which should be a little bit of timing. I don't know how much. Data log doesn't tell you, VESC doesn't tell you, kind of dumb, but you know, hey, whatever. Let's watch it run and let's run the, uh, real-time data as well. So we have some something to work with here. So now we're running real-time data. All right, we're gonna use our mini turbo, which started out, of course, as a crankcase evacuation pump, but now it's a good test bed. We're running 4S here on these packs. Let's go ahead and spool this thing up. Okay, so that was uh, interesting. Let's take a look at what ERPM we actually hit. So it looks like we're right around 90,000 ERPM. What is ERPM and how does it relate to actual RPM? Well, ERPM is electrical RPM and it's based on the number of pole pairs in your motor. So this motor, for example, is a four pole motor, which means, well, it has two pole pairs. So you take your ERPM number and divide it in half. So again, here, it looks like we hit approximately 90,000 ERPM, so you cut that in half, we saw about 45,000 impeller RPM. If we go back to the current page, you can see it's hitting almost 100% duty cycle, but then spiking down. Why? I don't know. It's the VESC. It's inconsistent. It does what it wants to do. All right, well, let's set this at uh, what should be a timing advance of zero degrees. This tends to get unstable but we're gonna find out the hard way, I suppose, because I like to torment my things. All right, let's get real time going. I don't think this is gonna work real well. <laughs> Threw an error right up. It does that sometimes, why? Because, well, that's what VESC does. Okay, so yeah, it looks like our ERPM is less. Not much, but a little bit less. So let's go back to this phase advance setting and let's knock it down to say zero. So zero should be 30 degrees of motor timing if everything is correct. Let's go ahead and write that to the motor. And all right, let's see what we get here. Okay. So weirdly enough, the curve is smoother and <laughs> I tested this before, I'm not going to lie, and I got just the opposite results. This, this thing is not really predictable. There's something about the way the motor is identified that, that's not consistent. Like when we were doing the tests with the P2 blower in the garage, we were having weird issues like it wouldn't fire up with the same settings from day to day. So. Again, I'm getting kind of opposite settings here, but basically, despite the instability that we got at one, and you can see that in the current graph, see how the current is all spiky with the first test and smoother here, it does seem to be drawing more current, which is what more motor timing should do. And it also does appear to be giving us more RPM. 
So, you know, let's do an ABA comparison just because we can. Let's go back here and let's go and set it back to one. And let's see what happens. Well, again, straight into error mode. And it's an under voltage error, which makes no sense. Okay. That's actually what I got the first time around. And that's why the VESC is not really repeatable. So at what's supposed to be zero degrees of timing, it gets unstable. Now let's go back down to 0.8, which should be some minimal amount of timing. So this is 0.8. So this should be where it's happiest. This is the default setting. Let's see if that holds true. It like that. That felt smooth. I wasn't feeling any weird hiccups. Nothing. Let's take a look at the current graph real quick. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. It's smoother than it was before. There's no hits in the duty cycle. It looks like what it's supposed to look like. So let's go back now that this thing apparently found its happy spot and let's set it to zero degrees or I'm sorry, phase advance to zero, which would be 30 degrees of timing in theory. Again, don't know why it's written that way. It makes no sense. Not from a user perspective anyway, but that is the way it is. So this should be max timing, which means we should see even more RPM, assuming this thing is now stable, which maybe it is, maybe it isn't, who knows. Okay, so that was actually kind of stable, surprisingly. It's a little tough to say for sure, but it does not appear that there is any significant difference in the RPM. Now, I always hate to end on a note like this, but I'm going to call this inconclusive. And I'm going to call it inconclusive because of this thing. You know, I'm going to retry this at some point with an ESC that actually does implement timing the way timing should be implemented. And we're going to run this test again because... It's, you know, as you saw here at the beginning of our tests, our first polls didn't make sense. They were reversed. So now the thing is happier. It's, it's, it's just finicky. This thing still needs work. If you're having fun following along with these videos and all the data and all the information that we're getting, give me a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and certainly leave a comment. All those things help the algorithm and it gives me the opportunity to do more and more videos just like this. I'll catch you all in the next one.